before you place a mic. Go listen to the speaker, go listen to the instrument. It's all about the physics and acoustics of it. Where is the sound coming from? You know, how's, you know, that's the most basic one on one thing that anyone can ever do. If you're not sure, go listen to it. You know, and if you want, if, if you know, um, I'm tracking this percussion instrument, I don't even know the name of it, but it has a lot of sub in it, but it has some highs in it too. So I'll do something where I'll get the sub out of it, but I also have to be conscious and get that that high out of it too. So the mic, mic selection is important and going in and listening to the instrument. Because what sounds in here and what sounds out there is two different things and you have to translate it as best as you can. So that's the best way is to just go in the room, feel what the musician's feeling, hear what the musician's hearing, you know. I'll walk in a session and even I'm just the engineer theoretically, but I'll start teaching them about how to use proximity or how to back off a mic a little bit or how to switch their 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 tones from their chest to their head to their you know, and, and um, just things like that where they need a lot more direction. Sometimes it's like you'll go over something that's really good and then all of a sudden they can't get it again. You know what I mean? So a, a lot of times it is a mental factor. A lot of times you just have to show people. Sometimes they can get the tone, they just don't know how to get it. There's sometimes an inexperience where artists don't, don't um, take a vocal lesson or something where you can just help them like just show them how to place something or, you know what I mean, show them the note on the piano or, you know. I, I've been lately, I've been kind of doing a couple of mono room tones on my drums and I, I found a great position. I, I'll put a mic between the kick and snare, like like coming in right here, right between the kick and snare, and then I'll put one right between the two symbols, like right above the drummer mono room, and I'll play with a lot of compression and stuff. And then um, I use three um, kick drum mics. I use a Yamaha sub kick on my kick, and then I'll use a very small condenser mic on the actual beater in front. And then my biggest trick is on on a lot of bass amps. I'll take another B50 uh, Yamaha sub kick. You actually have to get the new one that they came out with because it sounds much better than trying to invert the phase on a, a regular NS10. But um, on on a, on my and all of my basses on all of Alicia's last album, we used the Yamaha sub kick on the bass amp. We use a B15, and uh, you get this really cool sub where you can get more of the roundness out of the actual amp, and you have that sub separately. And I really work with the drummer like. We have a huge drum kit collection, so a lot of our tweaking and, and getting sounds is right there at the instrument itself. We start right there to actually go in the room and listen to what you're recording in the live room itself, you know. And um, we, we, we go for, we first start out with like picking a vision of how we want the drums to sound. You know, and then I'll go in and I'll get each mic the way I want it, each tone, and I'll mute everything and I'll get the perfect mono, have a mono room mic that I love to place. I'll get the perfect tone by using EQ and compression out of that one room mic. I'll make the drummer move the hi-hat away just to get the perfect tone and, and loop and balance out of my mono room mic and I'll use that a lot of times. We really focus on the, the underneath skin sometimes, making it a third or a second harmonic down, so when you hear the initial ring, on the decay, you'll hear that note underneath. So you, if you do a second, you get this like decay of the You kind of hear it, you know? It's pretty cool, like messing with tuning is a lot of fun if you have the time. Alish is very strict on not using auto-tune. There's a couple of lines even on this last album that I really wanted to tune. She just would not let me. Um, or Manny, our mixer. She just, it is what it is. Back in the day we didn't have all that. Like, you listen to a vocal now from a lot of these new artists and it's so pieced together like a puzzle. It's not, it doesn't sound real anymore. It sounds so painted. We do many sessions where we just have huge jam sessions where we'll do eight to ten songs in a row and sometimes it's all about performance and sonics 
and we'll comp and have, you know, 20 vocal comps. Sometimes it's about capturing the vibe and the moment and just using one vocal take from top to bottom. So it depends on what the vibe of the song is, but we definitely experiment. There's no rules. There's no rules either way. And the cool thing about Alicia is she's very into gear and trying a lot of this stuff. So she may go in and we have 30 vocal comps one day and then the next day it's just one take all the way down. Just her and her on, on the song Superwoman on her album. It's one take all the way down. She's doing her vocal while she's playing the piano. So when the record label calls me and was like, you messed up, you didn't make an acapella. I'm like, no, there is no acapella because she sang her vocal when she played her piano at the same time. So how can there be, how can there be, you know, an instrumental, a pure instrumental or a pure acapella because, you know, the piano mics, you hear her vocal coming through, you know. There's not many choices today when it comes to consoles and um, when you want the to, to look and feel like you're on a console and, and, and work on a console that has great my pre's, great EQs and SSL's history stands for itself. Um, I'm not into, you know, using a big mouse, a big virtual mouse, you know. I can't imagine sometimes artists just wanting to be just on a control surface where they can't push up a fader, where they can't feel, you know, like they're working on a console. I'm old school, so that's what I love. That's what I love about this. And the Sonics are incredible, you know, but that's besides the point, you know. There's a lot of times when I'm not in the box, and it's so much easier to put an EQ in and to tweak three knobs and get the tone as opposed to sitting there tweaking a plug-in. It's so less creative and it takes you a little bit longer to achieve what you want. You know, it's so easy to just put a gate in or a compressor in and just make it work, as opposed to using a lot of these interfaces and plugins that you're looking at in a computer. It's a little less musical. It's a little less... There's so much more color there when the audio is actually going through. It's great to have the option to do both. I just... It doesn't matter who I'm working with. It's who's challenging me. You know, you could put me in a room with, you know, Christina Aguilera, but if all I have is a two-track and I'm just tracking vocals all day, it's boring. I want to be challenged, and I, I strive to work with people like Alicia and Outkast and people like that who are innovative, who are changing the industry, who are raising the industry, bringing the industry back. Um, you know, I want to... Um, work with those people that when you hear their record you go what is that sound and how did you get it 